Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop and today we're excited to have Barb and Mary with me and my sister designs in our studio and they're going to show you how to make this really cute frog from their frog patch pattern. Well Kimberly this is one of our most popular patterns. We've been doing it for years. It's like a little quilting lesson in a frog. Um, you'll be doing a little bit of piecing, a little bit of quilting, and a little bit of embellishment and making the frog your own. What you'll need to start is your frog patch pattern. Uh, today we're we'll going to be using fabrics from our new Laugh Out Loud collection from Moda, some neutral piecing thread, our favorite is Arafil. What you'll need is a fat quarter size of some leftover batting scraps. I've just used my Hobbs 80-20 leftover from all my quilting, but Mary likes to use... I use fusible pellon. It's just easier for me. I don't like the... yeah. But um, this is one of my favorite things to do with it too. You'll need this because if you're not using the pre-fused um, batting, you'll need some 505 spray to fuse that. Uh, a friction pen, some pinking shears, good heavy duty ones, some poly pellets, some buttons for embellishment, along with some white embroidery floss. The first thing we need to do is prep our pattern pieces, and this is very simple to do. I simply take the pieces directly from the pattern and I lay them out in front of me so that I've got my C's together, my A's together, and my B's together. You simply cut them out, tape them together. Since we make so many frogs and it's a lot easier, Mary and I usually trace our pattern pieces on some uh, poster board that we just get at the craft store. This is really easy to do. Then you can just lay these pieces onto your frog and you don't have to pin. You can just trace around with your friction pin. Super simple. You'll need to piece together something that's approximately the size of a fat quarter, which is an 18 by 21 piece of cloth. Get creative with this. You can either sew together charm squares, jelly roll strips. Mary mm -hmm. likes to use leftover quilt blocks and add some scraps around them to make it just fun and colorful. Okay, you'll start with your plain fat quarter. And I like to take this outside and a lot of times I'll get a large piece of cardboard and I'll spray a little, just a little dab of the 505 in the center to hold my piece on here. Add my 18 by 21 inch piece of, inch piece of batting and then add my pieced frog top. So when you're finished, it looks just like this. So you've got your backing, your batting, and your piece top. Okay, and I like, I'm just really, really particular when I sew, and I like to trim everything before I start sewing because it makes it easier to draw the lines and also I can make sure my pieces fit. Okay, I love these Creative Good rulers, and this Barb can cross hatch anything. I can too. That's about the I only kind of quilting we can I do. I can't free motion. And she has her pen, and she's going to mark some lines. So we're going to start. You can either start, it doesn't have to be even. Um, sometimes I like to go and bisect my corners like this if I'm using um, charm squares and I make a line all the way down. Okay, And I'll do another line about a half inch alongside that. This is where Barbara and I come in, but I would do an inch. Yep. I just and I like my heavy duty small. quilting. Then you take it and do it the other direction. You'll also need to make a few lines this way. But I would sew all one way first, come back, sew the second line. Don't pucker. Next, we're taking our quilted frog top and we're going to cut out our frog pieces. This is where that poster board comes in really handy because you're not going to need to pin and it makes it so much easier to trace. So like I said, just adjust this to where you want it. Take your friction pen and just gently trace around the toes, up the side, the front leg, and the nose. So now we have the two pieces for our frog top cut out. I've got the fourth and quarter, and I'm going to fold it in half. Because I'm working on the fold with the pattern piece C, and I'm going to lay it right on my fold. I'm going to trace it again, and then I'm going to cut it out with scissors, the regular old scissors again. All right, we have our frog patch belly ready to go. And putting together the two pieces for the frog top is very simple. We're going to layer them right sides together. I'm going to line up his little nose. And I'm going to put a pin there. I'm going to line up his little butt. 
and at least one more right in the center. Sometimes I'll put another pin or two in here because I'm a pinner, but you may not want to do that. We're going to use a quarter inch seam. We're going to start at the nose. And off I go. I try to use a 2.0 or a 1.9 because I want a nice small stitch. These poly pellets are small and I want to make sure that none of them leak out of the frog guns. Now that we've got the seam sewn down our frog backbone, we want to press it open so that it lays nice and flat and we don't have any bumps. Little trick that I use is I don't open my frog yet. Oh, don't you love the sound of that steam? And I'll take it on the side, use my finger to work ahead of my iron, and I'll press that to the side. I'll flip it over and do that same thing again. This way I'm not pressing down that lumpy curve on my frog and I've got a nice seam that lies open and the top is nice and full. Hopping right along, we're ready to put our two pieces of our frog together. You're going to work with your wrong sides together. So I'm going to flip his belly over and I'm going to put the wrong side of the frog top so that they're matching. I found that it's easier to work belly side up. And because there's some extra fabric there in the top, I use quite a few pins and I pin in some key locations. I'll get the nose together. I'll pin in each of the armpits. And you can see that I'm moving these out to meet the frog top. So you're gonna, that belly's gonna be kind of stretched like many of ours are. Okay, some more armpits. I generally like to pin all the way around. I get his elbow and the tips of his toes. And I'd like to stop and start on the sides. So I sometimes forget and I'll sew the whole thing close. So I'm going to come up with a little system and I'll put two pins at the start and two pins at the stop. So when I see those two pins, I remember that I've got to stop and leave that hole to fill him up with the poly pellets. I put my frog body close to where I put my double pins. Now I want to make sure that I back stitch when I start this and when I end this so that it's strong enough and it won't, the stitches won't tear out when I'm putting my poly pellets in. So we're going to start also with a nice generous quarter inch seam allowance. We want to have room once the frog is sewn together to make sure we have some room to pink and we want those little triangles to show up really nice. All right, so I'm going to start and just back stitch a little bit and continue with my generous quarter inch seam all the way around my frog. I'm coming up on my second set of double pins to tell me to stop. So if I don't remember to stop, I'm going to actually sew that close, hole close and I'm going to be ripping it out. Back stitch, and we're ready to take our frog out of the sewing machine. Now we've got our frog all sewn together with our nice and generous quarter inch seam and I've removed all the pins, but I'm going to put two pins back in and I'm going to pin it again at the beginning and at the ending because that is the only area right now that I don't want to pink. I want to make sure that I pink that after I fill the frog. So let's start pinking. And I just start and carefully go around and you can see your seam. And you can also see now that because I use that generous quarter inch seam, I've got lots of room to maneuver around this guy. Okay, my pin is telling me to stop with the pinking shears. So now I've got my frog pinked all the way around. He's looking pretty good. And we're next going to fill him with the poly pellets. So what we've done is made a small funnel over our leftover poster board and we taped the back of it so it stays in place. 
Actually, these homemade funnels work a little bit better than the store-bought funnels because the store-bought funnels have such a small opening at the bottom, the pellets get caught sometimes. So I'm just going to cut the corner off my bag of poly pellets, and my lovely assistant Mary here is going to help me hold my funnel. Yeah, now the hard part's done. I'm here. And what we'll do is just slowly pull this, pour this into the frog. And as we get more and more pellets in there, my lovely assistant will just lift him higher and higher. But you can do this yourself. Okay, what I like to do is take the funnel out every once in a while and make sure that I hold my fingers there to make sure none of them escape. And I'll work the pellets down into all the legs, arms, and toes first. So we'll just work some of those down in there. Add ready some more. Yep, yeah, we're okay. ready for you again. I do this well, so here we go. You do. Okay. I don't. I don't care. Hey, okay, give what me my people juice. say. You are helpful. Almost finished. We've got our frog filled to capacity. We've gently worked all the poly pellets into his legs and toes and arms, and he's got a nice full belly. So now we just have to worry about closing that little spot that we left for putting the poly pellets inside them. So I'm going to take a little piece of stitch witchery and I'm going to place that right inside where those two fabrics meet. I'm going to pinch it together. I'm going to run over to the iron and iron that close. Now I won't have any leaking poly pellets from my frog when I'm sewing that final hole together. He's Filled to the brim, he's nice and juicy, and we're going to make, put in some eyes, give him some personality. So what I need is my embroidery needle and a little bit of DMC embroidery floss. I'm going to take my two buttons. I like to use two contrasting buttons so that you, they really show up. I don't measure where I put the eyes, I just kind of eyeball it to give him some personality. I'll thread my embroidery floss through both my buttons and I'll just pick a spot on the frog where I think his eye ought to go. I'll run my needle through there, come back up through my button, tie this off just with an over under knot, and I'm going to give him some fun froggy eyelashes. I'm going to clip those off so that they're not very long and just fray those apart. So you do that for both sides until you have some fun eyes that look like this. You can really get creative with fancy buttons or just the plain ones work just fine. I like to dress up my frogs a little bit sometimes. Sometimes I'll give them a belly button and other times I'll give my frog little sucker pads on his feet. So I just try to make him fun, dress him up for your personality, and have fun with your frog. Our frog badge pattern is available at the Fat Quarter Shop in paper or download form. So have fun making your frog today. There's all kinds of possibilities. Um, we've made over one million frogs. And so have the girls at the Fat Quarter Shop. They've got a whole collection here of Duck Dynasty frogs. It shows you how you can put your personality into it. We've got Jace with his beanie. We've got <laughs> Uncle Cy with his glasses and his cringy old beard. We've got Willie with his American bandana. And don't forget about Miss Kay. She's got a darling apron just right for the full-figured frog. Have fun making your frogs. See you next time.